Mavuno Church was planted by Nairobi Chapel in the year 2005, and by the year 2008, they were located at the Bellevue Cinema Grounds in the South Sea suburb of Nairobi, Kenya. It was from Bellevue that Mavuno began to see exponential growth. Their congregation grew from 400 to over 1,600 adults in a matter of months, and they multiplied from one church meeting in one location to five churches meeting across three different nations. The Bellevue days were great and saw many great initiatives grow. There was Mizizi, where hundreds of ordinary people began their discipleship journey. There was the internationally renowned Fearless Summit, and the community impact spread the love. In addition, there were many exciting outreach initiatives and events that continually brought people into Mavuno. However, right in the middle of that growth lay an impending challenge. Not only was Mavuno constantly under threat of eviction from their Bellevue location, the vision to plant culture-defining churches across Africa and the gateway cities of the world meant that a permanent global headquarters was required. Mavuno had to prayerfully consider their next steps. You know, Bellevue was an amazing place, and we saw so much of God's grace there. We loved the place. Uh, but even with all the transformation that was going on, people getting saved, exciting things happening, uh, it was a very insecure place to be. I mean, our landlord wouldn't give us a lease, so we're there just month by month. Uh, we found that it was just uh, hard to plan ahead. Uh, one time he even sold the prop some of the property where we had even developed. So we had to actually demolish what we had put down and put it up again somewhere else at great cost to ourselves. There was just a lot of things that just co kept communicating to us that we were very insecure. And that the thing that God was calling us to do could easily be threatened if we did not find a home of our own. And so we got together a small team, a uh, development team, and uh, just some really uh, committed people at Mavuno and challenged them to find us a piece of land that we could purchase. And uh, this development team, they, they met for quite a while. They examined many properties. Finally, they found this 20-acre piece of land out in uh, the Arthur River area, uh, the, the suburbs of Nairobi. Uh, and it was, it was just exactly what we, we knew that this is what God wanted. The access to it, everything told us this is what God wanted us to, to purchase. But the amount that we needed to raise was astronomical. It wasn't anything that any of us had imagined we would ever ask people to give. It was $1.5 million, uh, actually $3.5 million. Um, and it was, oh my goodness. I mean, I remember just feeling so intimidated coming to ask God's people if we could raise that, that money. But I'll be honest and say I was overwhelmed by the generosity of the people of Mabuno. That people pledged that they would give this amount. Uh, that we even got pledges that su surpassed this amount. And people actually gave extremely sacrificially. And with time, we're actually able to put down our deposit for the land, but also to be able to purchase, uh, to, to, to get onto the land and to begin to develop it. Now, the crazy thing about this land is, of course, you, it was completely desolate, completely undeveloped, there was nothing around it. It was just a wilderness. And it was hard to exercise the eyes of faith to imagine what one day could be. I mean, it was such a dry place. We came with our children, with, our, uh, with members of our congregation, and we had several days when we just came to slash the bushes and work and make the place presentable. Uh, my goodness, none of us had any imagination of what one day God would do in that area. And it was in this place, we called it Hill City, the city on a hill that cannot be hidden. That was our step of faith, our, our, our name of faith. And it was at this place that God began to incubate the, the, the dreams, the things he had already put in our hearts and show us that he was about to do something even bigger in the time to come. One of the leaders who was key to the relocation was Pastor Anji Kimaru, who served as Mavuno's executive pastor in charge of discipleship. Teams were in place to help with the development and preparation of the property, but it was her responsibility to make sure that the core business of the church, the discipleship of men, women, and children, was not disrupted and that it continued uninterrupted. We took a drive across the city of Nairobi and into Ati River just to meet with Pastor Angela Kimaru and hear her version of events. 
So I've had the privilege of having a vantage point uh, of Mavuno throughout the years. Um, I was there at the very first service in 2005. I was there when we moved to Bellevue, exciting times. And then I've had the privilege to be here when we moved at Hill City. It was a good time because we came and we slashed the grass, all hands on deck, even the kids were here. Um, we set up a tent, we, we cut the grass, we planted trees. It was hard, but we did it. In fact, one of the things I specifically remember is coming and then Pastor Simon uh, at the groundbreaking day led us in prayers. And you know, when Pastor Simon, the man prays, God checks in. And so God checked in and there were words of knowledge and words of prophecies that were spoken over this space. The one I particularly remember was that Hill City was going to be a place where men and women were gonna be launched into the world to be fearless global changers. And you guys, God has done it. And he's still doing it to this day. I am one of the people, I personally have been sent out by Hill City to plant Mavuno South and we've planted many churches from that time. What I believe, to be honest, is once you know we free the future, once we own this property, guys, ministry is just going to be accelerated. This is what I believe, that we're going to plant churches in Croatia, we're going to plant churches in China, we're going to plant churches in Cairo, in South Africa, Brazil, we're coming once we free our future. Guys, I'm excited because it's not just about my story. It's going to become your story. It's going to be you being sent out to change the world. Let's free the future, people.